Hello, today I'm going to talk about Starfire, 3rd edition from 1992. There, it initially came out in the 1970s and was in some of the task force, like, kind of capsule versions. First of all, I appreciate subscriptions. I'll keep uh, filling out my library here, so if you have interest, you know, please subscribe. Appreciate it. So from Task Force Games, and it, uh, I'm sure it evolved a bit since the first revisions came out in, um, in the 70s, but, you know, the intent is, you know, kind of still the same. It's a bookshelf game. It's 11 by 9 by like an inch and a quarter. There, you know, it's nice, it kind of really pops out. Colors are a bit intense, but I guess that's the purpose. Shows a battle of like a, looks like a spaceship here that's in like a repair dock of some sort, being attacked by the antagonist here. It's glad to get a, a box version of it, that's always, a lot of Task Force games don't have box versions, so I just appreciate to get a box version. The back shows a little bit of the what's going on here. And Starfire players lead great sp space fleets through a future history in which interstellar superpowers clash in huge and bloody wars. Races featured in this set include the relatively peaceful Terran Federation and the warlike Conite of Orion, along with smaller empires such as the Empire of Gormus, Fuchi Association, and the Rigelian Protectorate. Alliances will shift and change as you struggle for your share of the universe. The new Starfire game system allows you to design your own ships, filling out your fleet with ships personalized to your style of play. The Swift Resolution D10 only system gives you the power to maneuver large fleets without sacrificing quickness of play. Includes, so it's got a 96 page rule book, which thankfully I won't be going detail to detail on that. What I'll do is they have a four page like introductory book, I'll go with that, and then when I do the playthrough, I'll add in details from that 96 page book, but I'll talk about that at sections at a high level. A lot of counters, 432 die cut playing pieces, they're you know, one-sided, 20 by 24 full color star map, and it, the map is, I'll show in detail later, but it's, a, you know, it's kind of a thick you know, poster paper. And 10 side die. 12 and older, playing time variable, complexity moderate. So, kind of neat thing about it is it's got a lot of counters. The the battles are pretty quick, you know, like the D10, they say, resolution. Um, but you can, like I said, customize your ships. You can have a lot of different kinds of ships. So, that's kind of interesting. Credits here. Like I said, it went through some evolutions. But this for this one in 1992, David M. Weber, Game Design, Executive Editor, Timothy Olson, Assistant Editor, Mark Costello, Original Game Design, in 75 and 79, Stefan V. Cole, Encyclopedia Galactica gives you a sense of the universe, and that's Mark Costello, David Weber, Production, Marketing Promotion, Cover Artist, David Minahan, interior artist, Jim McGonagall, counter sheets, Lena M. Cole, Stephen V. Cole. So in the back, as far as theme, it's always good when they talk about, you know, the unique universe that it's in. And it's got, you know, this encyclopedia, you know, Galactica back here. It talks about the different races, the Terran Federation, the of Huichi, the Khanate of Orion. Looks like it's descended from mustachioed cats, apparently. Empire of Gormus and their protector of Rigel. Either bears or badgers, can't tell. As far as components, you have this 96 page rule book, which I'll, you know, talk at a high level of the di different sections and show their application when I do the plane setup. And I'll go through in detail. This is the Quick Start Starfire. 
which shows you the basic elements of the game. So it's always nice to have a kind of starting up here. It's got four pages. Show you the basics. Nice inside die. And it doesn't come with a tray, but these GMT trays fit you know perfectly into the box. And like I said, it's got 432 counters. They're all one-sided, but they're you know they're functional. So here's the unique counters. Some of these playing pieces over here are used in the you know the quick start kind of basic game. And then the others are used in the the normal game, which is more advanced. So the this color coding, there's you know five players. Taryn is black and blue, Orion is black and red, Ofichi is white and black. Regilian is black and green and Gorm is black on tan. And for these playing pieces they're all each each race has the same. These are the colors but they have the same type for each race. So you have the Escort, Corvette, Frigate, Destroyer, Light Cruiser, Heavy Cruiser, Battle Cruiser, Battleship, Super Dreadnought, and then there's a Warp Point counter. And then we, then these are neutral counters that are used. Some are, some of these are just used in, you know, the, the normal game, rather than being used in the quick start. But there's uh, freighters, bases, SBM pods, courier drones, and then various system bodies, planets and moons, stars, asteroids, and then items used in the the regular more advanced game. Again, they're the same type for each of the different five colors. So you have a fleet marker, so you can kind of group things into fleets. You know, strike grouping here. Uh, fighter squadrons, fleet carrier, assault carrier, light carrier, assault shuttle, shuttle, cutter, and a penance, and a monitor. And they're all, you know, half inch by half inch, you know, just uh, printed on one side. So here's the map, which is a, a tactical map. It's a 20 by 24. It's got 30 hexes by 42. The size of each hex represents an area of approximately one half light second across. And they're all numbered. And down here is the scattergram used in some optional movement rules to indicate initial facings of units in historical scenarios and determine the facing of unit making a transit through an unsurveyed war point. Then we'll get into rules. So there's a lot of games I like out there that um, like this and Starfleet Battles and other games where you, know, you don't just have like 8 or 16 pages of rules, you have like a volume, in this case 96 pages. So bear with me here while I try to figure out the best way to do this. But in this case, I think uh, it's handy, here's the big rule book. But they have a quick start which shows you the concepts. You know, I'll go through this in detail and then you know, mention the highlights in the, the main rule book. And then demonstrate some of the de the salties of the main rules when I do the playthrough. That's, that's what I'll be doing. So there's the quick start, four pages. Basically, this quick start allows you to see the concepts, but you know there are first there's some detailed rules in the the standard rules that are override some of these more basic concepts. I'll show. 
So Starship Control Sheets. Unix Control Sheet lists its internal technical systems in order from left to right. Single capital letter or capital followed by lowercase letter. Inner numeral is used to designate each system. In combat, damage is occurred by crossing off one system for each damage point inflicted. The control sheet then reflects the systems of the unit which remain functional for the next technical turn. Here's an example. For instance, here it's got uh, 40 health spaces, it's unit health size, the identifier, name, atmosphere capable. So you, you may enter planetary atmospheres. Shown here. Three is the turn mode of three. Five S's, five units of shields. Five A's, five units of armor. H, cargo hold. W, gun missile launcher. BBS, boat bay. And Roman number one is one engine in engine room. In parentheses, parentheses Roman numeral two, two engines in, in engine room. D, defense, point defense anti-missile system. M2, two increments of multiplier, multiplex tech, tracking. QS, crew quarters. L, laser. M sub G, magazine. Six in parentheses is the movement allowance. And then they, for the various ships, they have that in the rules books, what they are. Then tactical turn. Each tactical turn represents 30 seconds of real time. In quick start, each tactical turn is divided into three segments. Turn sequence, initiative determination phase. Terminal goes first. Movement phase, players move their units in accordance with their movement rules. Combat phase, players fire the weapons of their starships in accordance with combat rules. Initiative roll 1d10. Movement. Units are moved one impulse at a time. An impulse is division of the movement phase, which consists of expanding one movement point for each unit of each player. MPs may be expended either by moving or staying in place. When a unit expends its last MP, its movement ends for the turn, even though other units which retain unexpended MPs may continue to move. The player with a lower initiative roll begins movement by expending one MP for each of his units. When he has done so, the player with a higher initiative roll expends one MP for each of his units. When all units on both sides have expended one MP, the movement impulse ends and the player with the lowest initiative begins the next impulse. There is no limit to the number of combinations of units which may be in the same hex during or after movement. So no stacking limitations. Movement allowances. The starship's movement allowance is a number of MP equal to the ship's functional engine rooms at the beginning of the movement phase. MP may be used to move to an adjoining hex in, into which the ship is facing, move to the adjacent adjoining hex and change facing, stand still or turn in place expanding one MP. Unit facings and turns. Each unit's counter must be faced, pointed toward a specific adjacent hex at all times. Whenever it is moved, it must be replaced on the map with clear unambiguous facing. In order to turn, a unit must first satisfy its turn mode by expending a total number of NPs equal to its turn mode on a single facing, whether by moving or remaining still. A unit which has satisfied its turn mode may change facing. There is no MP cost for actually turning, but starships may change heading by no more than 60 degrees, one hex side. All facing changes are made at the end of a movement impulse, that is, a starship may move into a new hex and change facing but may not change facing and then move in the same movement impulse. In its turn mode, must be satisfied for each facing change. MPs expended in previous turns carry over for this purpose, as do MPs expending it space in place. Unit need not turn in the same impulse in which it satisfies its turn mode, but turn mode must be satisfied after each facing change before another may be made. Unit may change facing more than once in a given movement phase, as long as it satisfies its turn mode for each change. A unit which expends all its MPs in place may change facing to any hex side it chooses on the impulse in which it expends the last MP. And then warpoint transits. So basically in 
when you're moving around, you're going between hexes, you go, you know, 10% you know, speed of light, but to make big jumps, you have to do, go through a warp, which are warp points. So do the warp. So ship may make transit by expanding one MP to move into a warp point hex, and then through the MP in a single impulse. But it doesn't have to do that if there's a WP there. If it begins an impulse in the same hex as WP, it has to expend one MP to enter the, the warp point. Warp point trends are effectively instantaneous and require no special systems aboard the Starship. But there's two restrictions on warp point transits. Unless the gravitational stresses of a WP are known to a Starship, that is, the WP has been surveyed by the Empire to which the Starship belongs, the ship will be thrown randomly off its original heading. To reflect this, roll six side die. Against the technical map scattergram and place Starship in the same hex as the WP in the heading indicated by the die roll. If the WP's stresses are known to the ship, it may emerge from the MT on the from the WP on the heading of its choice. No more than one starship may transfer transit WP in one direction on the same moving impulse. That is a maximum of six speed six ships may make transit in a single movement phase, one on each impulse. As each ship transits, place it in the hex containing the far end of the WP. It moves normally in the following movement impulse. Combat. The combat phase of a tactical turn occurs after all movements complete. During the combat phase, each player may fire any or all its weapons aboard its starships. All weapons out of a given unit are fired at the same time even though they may be fired at different targets, but, he, but the firing player chooses the sequence in which they are fired. The combat phase as a whole is made up of combat impulses, each of which is made up of all fire of a single unit of each player with units eligible to fire. The order of fire, the player loads the initiative, chooses one unit and fires its weapons, after which his opponent chooses one unit and fires its weapons. This completes one combat impulse, and the player with the initiative then begins the next impulse, continuing until all surviving units have had the opportunity to fire their weapons. No player is ever required to fire any weapon unless he wishes to. Sequence of damage. Starfire fire is not simultaneous. If a unit takes damage before it fires in the current combat phase, any weapons destroyed by that damage are not eligible to return fire. Firing unit's weapons. A unit's weapons may be fired in a sequence by the targets, and the sequence of all its fire must be declared before firing any weapons. The range of a shot is determined by counting the hexes between the units. After the range has been determined, cross index the weapon type and the range and the probability of hit table, and the number of intersection of the columns is the two hit number. Roll 1d10 if the result is equal to or less than a two hit number. It is scored. When it is scored, consult the weapons damage table and cross index weapon and range a second time to determine the damage points the weapon inflicts at that range. For missiles, it's the type of missile fired, not the launcher type, which determines damage. Record damage on target units shown below. Immobile units are easier to hit. To reflect this, add plus two to the hit probability of any weapon fired at a unit with a movement allowance of zero. Recording damage points. When a unit takes damage, the damage is immediately marked off on the unit's control sheet. Any system which is damaged before it has been employed in the current combat phase may not be used. Damage points are scored by marking off systems, skipping any previously destroyed systems. Different weapons inflect damage differently. The most common weapon systems inflict damage as follows. Weapons of the warheads, including ballistic missiles, sprint missiles, standard missiles, capital missiles, destroy systems from left to right, starting with shields and skipping none. Force beams inflict damage as warheads. Laser beams destroy systems from left to right in order, but skip shields, but skip ignore shields. Primary beams hit systems from left to right, skipping shields, armor, crew quarters, and cargo holds. 
Energy beams inflict damage from left to right, but skip over armor, cargo holds, crew quarters, and magazines. Destruction of units. Units destroyed when all systems are destroyed. As long as the single system remains intact, the unit is not destroyed. This shield code, however, represents a bubble of force around the unit and its physical structure, and certain weapons can inflict damage through shields, resulting in a control sheet consisting solely of S codes and marked off systems. In this instance, the unit is still destroyed. Targeting restrictions. The starship's targeting ability depends on three considerations. Fields of fire, number of weapons, and satisfaction of its fire control. Starships underway do not have a 360 field of fire. Their drive fields block their fire control sensors and a wedge astern of them, creating a blind spot indicated by the shaded hexes in the diagram so it can shoot all around here but not back here. The starship may fire as many targets as it has weapons, but unless equipped with multiplex tracking, it suffers a penalty of minus four to the hit probability for all targets engaged simultaneously. Multiplex tracking is indicated in the code M, followed by a number which indicates the number of additional targets a unit may engage without penalty. Block fire. A starfire hex represents an enormous volume of space in which no unit ever blocks another unit's fire, but the system bodies, suns, planets, moons, etc., are large enough that they may block fire. Stars are huge, even compared to the starfire hex. Our own sun would occupy just over nine hexes, for example. And no unit may fire at another unit if any hex occupied by the system primary lies directly between them or if both firing and target units are within one hex of the primary, but not in directly adjacent hexes. Plants and moons may block fire when both firing target units are within one hex of the planet moon and not in the same or adjacent hexes. The target is in the same hex as the planet or moon and the firing unit is not. The target is within one hex of the planet or moon and the planet or moon lies between it and the firing unit. In any of these cases, the player whose ship is first announced as target declares whether or not he is hiding behind the system body. If he is, his opponent, his opponent loses the shot, who still counts as a fired unit, but the hidden unit may not return fire against its attacker or any unit in the same hex as its attacker. Any number of mobile units may hide behind a single planet or moon, but no mobile unit may ever maneuver to place a system body between itself and a hostile unit. Use the same hex. Use the same hex may always fire at one another regardless of system bodies or fields of fire. Shields down. Starship scanners cannot normally tell the exact condition of a hostile unit, but certain indications of damage are observable. It must be announced as they occur. When a unit no longer has active shields, the only player must immediately declare that the unit is shields down. When a unit's first non-shield non-armor system is destroyed, the only player must immediately declare that the unit is streaming atmosphere as its hull has now been breached. If one of his units with long range scanners is within 10 hexes of a shields down unit, the only player may require his opponent to announce how many systems of what type remain operable aboard it, but not their order on the control sheet. And the ship master control sheets for all. So all the control sheets are shown in the, you know, the, the rule book. You can copy them out to use them. And then the play testers. So I'm just looking at the standard rule book at a you know, high level, just touching on various topics. So time scale, so one strategic turn is 30 days or 60 system turns. System turn is 24 interception turns. When an interception turn is 30 minutes, when tactical turn 30 seconds. Talks about star systems, war points, tackle map. You might, when things go off the map, you might, you might want to use an extra one so you show they keep moving. So you have additional, got the additional counters in the standard rules that I just talked about. Example of a spacecraft 
control sheet, then fighter squadron control sheets, an example shown here. Small craft control sheets, technical command control. Well, it's combat efficiency. It's exercised by from a command ship carrying a CO. If it's lost, there's some negative modifications to the die roll. Movement allowances. Facing so evasive maneuvering, if you declare by expanding a movement point, and that changes the hit probability. Special small craft strike, fight, strike fighter movement rules. Spacecraft planet moon interface. Only spacecraft configured for atmosphere may land on and or take off from planets. Or point transits, ramming. You can inflict damage by ramming ships if you have that capability. It's an optional rule, you can do simultaneous red movement. Order of fire, engaging large units. Engaging fires and craft and small craft, carrying damage points, targeting restrictions, fields of fire, block fire, shields down, planetary defense system centers and asteroid fortresses, fires and starships and atmosphere, break off and surrender rolls, damage control and emergency repairs. Readiness states, war point assaults, combat and readiness states, crew grade, it's a greater experience, you know, crew helps you, losing grade, tractor impressor beams, space stations and trackers, Deploying and recovering mines, boys and, boys and SBM Hawks. Loading and loading cargo. And designing and building units. Summary system codes. Descriptions of Starfire weapons and systems. High tech level 2 weapons and systems, high tech level 3 weapons and systems, high tech 4 weapons and systems, high tech 5, high tech 6, for instance, energy beams, mind control systems, high tech 7 weapons, engine tuner, overload adapter, for instance. Level 8, Advanced Maneuvering, Strike Fighters, Level 9, Anti-Matter Warheads, for instance, and then Player Information Tables. It'd be handy if there was a separate reference to that, but I guess I'll copy those off and have those set aside when I play. But the Weapon Range Hit and Probability Table, Weapon Range and Damage Table, Fighter Kill Table, Strike fighter types and capabilities, small craft capabilities, ordnance types and magazine cargo points, spacecraft hull types and capabilities. And here you find the starship control sheets and you copy off these, the ones you're using, and then you use these in play. So you have the Terran Federation Navy ships, Ofuichi Association Defense Command. Connate of Orion Space Arm Navy, Imperial Gorm Space Navy, Rigelian Protectorate Space Arm, and various scenarios, a lot of, a lot of scenarios. 
they don't uh most scenarios don't really have a, like a paragraph descriptor of this, you know, show you the different forces aligned and what the victory conditions are. So these uh, scenarios are not specifically part of the future history. The official scenarios will appear in the stars at war. These are designed to familiarize players with the technical rules and tech systems. It was invited to create their own ship designs. Victory in most scenarios is awarded on the basis of victory points. Destruction of enemy starships and fires is worth the following values. SD100, BB80, BC70, CA50, CL40, DD30, FG15, CT10, ES5, fighters 0.5. So, 12 good scenarios there. And this is the Encyclopedia Galactica, where it talks about, you know, the universe of different races. So the Terrans are omnivorous, bipedal animals, and I think we're all familiar with them. Ofuichi are erect, feathered bipeds, which resemble Terran avians in many respects. Tells about their, their various empires. Connie and Ryan. Ryan's are bipedal pseudo animals who orally resemble humanoid Terran felines, though they are, of course, the product of a totally separate evolutionary line. Talks about their appearances and their, their empires as well. Empire of Gormus. Gorm are six limbed creatures, so I guess they're not exactly humanoids. Terran biologists would class them as mammals, as they are warm blooded and bear their young life. They are large, mature adult stands between 2.25 and 3.25 meters. And the protector is Rigel. They're not in fact Rigelians all, just as Ryan's are not truly denizens of the constellation of Ryan. Labels applied by Terran strategic analysts in the early days of the Third Interstellar War. Find discovery that their entire protector pivoted around the gigantic warp traction junction of Rigel. True home world was the planet Kali, and then we'll get into play. Here's set up. I'll be doing scenario five. So I'll be uh, throwing some standard rules into the quick start rules. So it's the Terran Federation Navy versus the Connate of the Orion Space Arm Navy. Terrans, the Prince of Wales, a class BC with ammo of 200 SM, standard missiles, Oregon class CA, ammo 200 standard missiles, Rommel class DD, ammo 200 standard missiles, Connate, Delgore, CA, 200 standard missiles, starts in hex 4030 down there. Telray class CL, MO 200 SM, X 4030, and Boy Choi class DD, MO 200 SM, X 4030. So for the demo, I'm just going to do one of each of those kinds of ships. The war point starts over here in 4029, goes 15 technical turns. Turn Federation, enter map on turn one. Any map edge, they'll be coming over here. Gun units begin play facing, they'll be facing this way of my choice. So T defense objectives pass through the warp point, which is down here. With as many units as possible, the cons objectives stop the TFN. The turn player receives the victory point value of each of the ships. He can pass through the warp point. The Orion receives half the victory point total of each. And a destroyed TFN ship still on the map at the end of turn 15. And then, so part of it is you can only turn when you meet your movement allowance. So I'm going to track the, uh, the accumulated movement points by, these aren't in play, but these will be to track the, the movement accumulated of each of the, the different ships. And then when they reach their allowance, they can turn. That's, they are just for bookkeeping, I'm going to, have them go across here. 
Then I got these, you know, copy off these descriptors from the, in the book for the different ship classes. Then we'll get into play. So we'll roll for initiative, see who goes first. Here's Terrence, six, Ryan, seven, I'll go first. So there's the movement allowance and then the turn mode. And movement and allowance is equal to the number of engine rooms you have in the ship, and there's five in there, CA, six in there, CL, and five in there, destroyer. Then there's also the turn mode, which is three, three, and two. If I get them a little bit closer, I'll have the, you know, I'm just moving one hex at a time with all the Terran and Ryan, but since there's a ways apart here, I'll just have move. All theirs. So they're on this grouping here, all facing this way. First, see the the Delgor class CA. It's facing this way. Got a movement of five. Moving along of turn mode of three. So one, two, three. Uh, he's not going to turn. He's just going to keep going. He could though. Four or five. The light cruiser, the CL. It's got a movement of six and a turn mode of three. Go one, two, three, then he'll turn. One, two, three. Destroyer. Go five. One, two, three, four, five. Then going over to the Terrans. So their BC has a has six movement points and a turn mode of one, which is nice. CA has a movement points of six, turn mode of two, and the AC has a Movement of six, turn mode of two. So the BC is pretty maneuverable. But they're mainly going to be going straight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroyer. One, two, three, four, five, six, since he has a turn mode of two. And then the CA is also six, turn mode two. Two, one. Okay. So they're both at quite a long range yet. Now we're looking at combat now. And the range in hexes is about 22 to 23 hexes away. So not many weapons can do that. So you look at the weapon range and then damage as well. So beam beam weapons have a chance of hitting at that range, but the types of beams they have, when you look at that table, won't do any damage. And it's out of range of standard missiles, just barely. So Terran's got a capital force beam, a couple of those missile launchers. Uh, the CA has, you know, standard missiles, primary beam, launcher slash gun, force beam, and then the destroyer's got a launcher gun, a couple force beams. So they're out of range. And the Ryan's got 
rocket guns, lasers, rocket guns, laser gun, rocket gun, lasers, and a force beam. And they're all out of range. So looking at the next turn now. So I'll go for initiative first to Terran. Six, nine. Ryan one, so Terran goes first. So they're gonna obviously close and work towards the warp point. So since, since we're kind of closing in here, we'll uh, take turns, make sure everybody gets a chance. So these all have pretty small turn modes because the BC has a turn mode of one because it's got advanced maneuvering two. But they're pretty much gonna, going straight. Right in here. So they have movement of. They all have a movement a lot of, of six over here. So we'll have the Orion group move one. So the CA has a movement of five, CL is six, and Destroyer is five. So we'll do the CA first. And he's accumulated two. two turn mode point so he could uh, since he's got a turn mode of three once he goes to first one he can turn but he doesn't think he'll do that I'll just kind of go straight so the destroyer has yet accumulated one turn mode and he's got movement of two so he can do that he'll move up one and then rotate He'll just uh, he'll just move ahead one, and then we get back to the Terrans here. Go on. So they've gone two turns, and then here it's just going to keep going. Third. Fourth, fifth, and these can all go six, so. So they can all go five, but the next turn only the CL can go. And the sixth turn. You rotate. Go up here and rotate. forward and then only the seal can move and he'll move forward. So then we'll get into combat. So now combat will check the range and the Terrans have initiative so so go with the BC versus the CA. Range of 18. So the BC has he's got a capital beam he's got a couple capital beams and missile launchers so at a range of 18 let's see if the capital beam hits five nope one hits so for damage he had a range of 18 the capital beam does does one point damage 
And then you go by the rules as far as what damage is inflicted. So force beams inflict damage as warheads. Weapons of the warheads destroy systems from left to right. Starting with shields and not skipping any. So his target is the CA. So he takes out one shield. And then he also has four missile launchers, so he's going to fire four standard missiles. Again, at a range of 18. One finally gets through. So the CA does have a point defense, which can knock out those missiles. And the first one on the one to nine, it kills the missile. So we'll see if he's able to knock them out. He's knocked out on the CA. He's got two missile launchers and two Two lasers. The lasers don't have range, but he'll fire some standard missiles. See if they get through. Range of 18. One gets through. And then the BC has a point defense. As well. So on a 1 to 9, it'll knock that missile out. Yeah, he does knock it out. So he doesn't take any damage. And then the Terran DD has a couple force beams, but they can't reach. And he's got a rocket launcher, so he'll stand, fire a standard rocket. A range of 19. Nope. The DD on the right side will go. He's at a range of... He's just... He's at 22, so he's just out of range. So, instead of him going, we'll have the CL go, which has a range of 20. And so he has laser launchers. You can launch a couple rockets, he'll do that. To get through. So he's going at the CA. And the CA has a couple point defenses, so they need a 1 to 9 to kill it. Kills it just barely, but he misses. One. So one gets through and hits the CA, and an SM missile you know, does one point damage on the shield, so he's down to one there, and then lastly the CA will go against the CL. Eighteen. So you got, he's got uh, a couple of rocket launchers, primary beam, in a force beam. So the beams don't do any damage at that range. So 
So his rocket launchers, he's got one, two, fire a couple rockets. Let's go into CL, hit. And then let's see if the CL has a point defense. He does, when a one to nine, you'll knock the missile out. Nope, gets through. So he takes one damage on his shields. So it's a bit about Starfire, third edition from 1992, Task Force Games. Like I said, there are many editions that came before that. I uh, like, like there's a box edition. So it's you've got a lot of scenarios, but it's uh, you know heavily tactical. There's also you know some strategic elements, but it's neither you get to configure your ships. Um, the battles, you know, the fighting's pretty quick. There's some bookkeeping, of course, as you t keep track of you know what damage is done to your ship's course. Um, if you're looking for like you know a tactical kind of space battle thing, that's that's fine. So got a lot going for it. It's you know specific to what it does. Um, first time components are good. I like the map. I like the box counters. Plenty of counters. You know, obviously a ton of replayability. There's so many different scenarios. And I just I mean, there's a lot of advanced rules I didn't touch on. I just kind of gave you a basic playthrough. You can land on planets. You can have fighters. Um, a lot of the rule book is talking about the different capability of weapons and technologies. But hopefully I give you a bit of a flavor on it. I'll give it a, give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, thanks a lot.